Whether it be from TV or the movies, politics or music, Germans can sometimes be a little overly confident they already know what Americans are all about and what our culture actually is. But is what they have been told the truth? Or just contracts meant for entertainment? guys and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie and I'm Aubrey and we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. We have just recently uploaded our 200th video on YouTube and something that we have realized uploading that many videos is how much you guys have taught us about different perspectives on the world through your comments below. It has given us a much richer experience living in Germany because you have pointed out and taught us things that maybe we wouldn't have dug deeper into when it comes to German culture because we wouldn't have realized its importance or that there are popular misconceptions about Germany that we may have mistakenly shared and you kindly corrected us on. However, there is another side of our comment section where we have started to pick up on quite a few misconceptions that Germans seem to have about the US. Also, from conversations that we have had with people in our everyday lives, we have learned some mistaken stereotypes of American culture floating around Germany that sometimes leaves us scratching our heads wondering where the heck they even come from. And that is exactly what we are going to talk about today in our video. German misconceptions and false American perceptions. Are there any exceptions? Our experiences are definitely specific to where we are originally from, a state in the southern U.S. called Oklahoma, and where we live now in the southwestern German state of Rhineland Falls. Both of these places have their own unique subcultures and life experiences that may not be representative of the two countries as a whole. You may also wonder where some of these misconceptions come from and not believe some people actually hold them, or you may believe these misconceptions because of your personal experiences. Therefore, let us know your experiences with these things in the comments below and where you're from. Also, if you're from a different country than these two, we wanna hear about what these things are like where you live. In some of our videos, we have discussed differences between food culture in the US and Germany. And one thing that we get comments asking for all the time is a video on the differences between German and American table etiquettes, which one of these days we will get to, but today we specifically need to go ahead and address something that we get in the comments all the time, and that is the comment, Americans cut up their food completely, set their knives to the side, switch their fork to the right hand, then eat their meal. Supposedly, this is in contrast to how Germans cut a single bite and eat it while keeping their knife and fork in their hands the entire meal. There are more nuances and differences here that we are not addressing, like which hands hold the utensils, the direct direction of the fork curve, etc. But the stereotype that it is proper American table etiquette to cut up an entire plate of food, set the knife aside for the rest of the meal, then eat, is completely false. Forbes.com describes the American style of proper etiquette this way. American style, also known as a switch and switch style. It requires diners to cut one bite of food at a time, unless however you are under the age of seven, then you can cut your entire plate of food at once. So yes. We do place our knives down and switch our hands, but it is considered juvenile to cut up all of your food into bite-sized pieces before eating it in the US, just like it is in Germany. We have had comments saying, well, that's the way that I saw people doing it in the US, so that must be the proper way to do it. And to that, we just say, those people were not using proper table manners, and that is not how Americans technically are supposed to eat. Of course, there are times people may not follow every proper table etiquette procedure by the book, but still, by and large, Americans do follow this rule and cut one bite at a time, but it just requires a lot of knife and fork hand switching. To stick to the food theme, one thing we also receive regular comments about is that Americans think fast food chains are legitimate restaurants and don't know what good food actually is. These ideas lead to the stereotype that Americans have very little culture surrounding food and don't understand what a real meal is. To clear up confusion as to why Americans even referred to fast food chains as restaurants, here is the definition of a restaurant. 
an establishment where meals are served to customers. So in the simplest form, yes, even fast food chains are restaurants by definition. However, the rest of the stereotype can be sort of a difficult one to answer because you have, on one hand, Americans are known for food, at least eating a lot of it. Yet on the other hand, we're stereotyped as we don't actually know what a good meal is. Yes, the US has a significantly higher number of fast food chains than Germany, and many of our sit down restaurants that aren't fast food are still normally large chains, and this stereotype is a tricky one for us to try to figure out how we can best evaluate it. But this is what we figured out to look at in terms of data. First, if we look at which countries have the most Michelin-starred restaurants throughout the world, according to applerist.com, we see that the US ranks number six. At first glance, we feel pretty good about that, but Germany edges it out ranking number four with over 100 more restaurants with at least one star. Let's also not forget the video we just did on the size comparison of Germany to the US and how much smaller Germany is. The New York Times also reported in 2010 that Americans eat 31% more packaged food than fresh food and they consume more packaged food per person than their counterparts in nearly all other countries. How and where we eat our food is also different from Europeans. Stanford University published an article in which they wrote, Europeans don't do half the precious culinary things that upscale marketers tell us they do, but they do mostly sit down with friends or family in the middle of the day for a substantial meal. That culture is vanishing in the United States, both the sitting down part and the substantial part. Journalist Michael Pollan estimates that 20% of all American meals are eaten in a car. So if we're looking at it based on these metrics, yeah, I'll admit it could give the impression to a German that Americans have the idea that fast food is a legitimate restaurant experience and we don't know what quality food really means. However, in our heads, that doesn't seem to be the case. Americans generally know fast food isn't a nice meal, but it is something that is easy and quick when we have nothing else, are in a hurry, or because it is an affordable food for those that are on a budget. But we still know what a good meal is when we have it. We just don't seem to have those as often as Europeans may. I would maybe say the perspective on food is just different for Americans and Germans. For many Americans, food is just something we have to have in order to get through our day in many cases, but then on a special occasion or the weekend, we will enjoy a really nice meal. I also grew up in a family with farmers, and in the summers, we would spend a lot of time working on those farms, harvesting fresh fruits and vegetables that we would serve for our meals. This is kind of unique for some Americans who don't know where their food maybe comes from, but for me, I grew up with quite a bit of quality foods that my family grew out ourselves. We can't speak for all Americans on this just from our experiences, and we do think this one is a little bit relative, but I don't think that we can completely deny the stereotype based on the data that we see. However, maybe it is less we don't know good food, but we just prioritize it less. Or maybe we simply think we know what good food is, but it is one of those things that you don't know until you have it. I will say for us personally, we don't think that we taste a huge difference in quality of food between Germany and the US, but again, maybe it is just because of what we were raised on. I'm sure you already will, but let us know your thoughts on the subject. Is food just something that you need to survive, or is it something that you cherish experiencing every meal? Real quick, I wanted to take a moment and just thank you so much for watching this video. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but you guys watching it is what supports us to be able to keep bringing you these videos. A comment, sharing this video, a like, and subscribe helps us out way more than you know. But if you've enjoyed it and want to support us in other ways, we have our Patreon linked in the description and you can check it out. There, you will find some behind the scenes or never before seen bloopers for our patrons and ways that you can support our work. We very much appreciate the help and you interacting with us so that we can keep bringing you more content. Now, let's get back to the video. The next misconception is honestly a pretty weird one that we don't understand why we have gotten this one seriously as often as we have, but we have received many comments and had conversations in real life about how in Germany, they have a very unique thing called a Freiwillige Feuerwehr in English, a volunteer fire department. Yeah, strangely specific, but we have been told so many times that we feel like maybe it is something actually worth addressing. And no, we have no association with firefighting and don't 
talk about it a lot. It's just a random thing Germans love to tell us about. So just so we are all clear, this is not a unique thing to Germany. And in the US, we also have volunteer fire departments. About 67% of America's firefighters are volunteers, according to the National Fire Protection Association. According to DW.com, in 2019, 95% of German firefighters were volunteers. We will say that from the outside, it does seem, however, that Germany's volunteer fire department are slightly different from American in one interesting way. In one of our videos, we discussed how people meet people and socialize once they move to Germany. In it, we briefly covered how social clubs are a very important part of German culture. And an interesting thing was how many comments we received of people suggesting we should join the local volunteer fire department to meet people. Again, we can't speak for all of America, but for our part of the US coming from a town around 100,000 people in Oklahoma, we would never suggest you should join the volunteer fire department to meet people socially. I would say that in the US, volunteer firefighting seems to be strictly more of a service to the community, unlike in Germany where it is a place for community service and socializing. DW even reported in the same article that the voluntary fire brigade is an instant way to become part of a new community. Both countries also are starting to experience issues where less and less people are volunteering to be firefighters. And in the same DW article from earlier, they reported that the German Firefighters Association was seriously considering to apply for them to be declared intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO in order to try and bolster some brigade's futures. We will say that there does seem to be some unique characteristics to the German volunteer fire departments that is worth looking into for more information and cultural context, possibly for a future video. But for the sake of this video, all we are covering is the fact that the US does in fact also have a volunteer firefighting system. We are really interested in knowing if you are a part of your local volunteer fire department and what you know about it or get out of it personally. Leave your experiences with this in the comments below so we can learn more about it. From the opposite perspective, a stereotype that Americans definitely have of Germany that drives many Germans bonkers is that all of Germany is the later hosen wearing, white sausage eating, polka dancing type of Germany that you see in movies and on postcards. What they don't realize is that although small compared to the US, Germany is incredibly diverse and has so much more culture and life to offer outside of what is actually Bavaria in the southern part of the country that Americans mistake as quintessential German culture for the entire country. However, we have also come across cases in which Germans do the same thing sometimes when they talk about Americans. We often get comments about the American personality being fake, superficial, and they hate all of our small talk. Or they know we have a two-party political system and think therefore all Americans fall into one of those two camps very cleanly. But here's the thing. The US is a massive country with a million different perspectives, religions, views, personalities, ethnic backgrounds, and it is impossible to paint Americans with one brush. Take a person from New York City and drop them in Oklahoma City, and they might as well be in a foreign country because the culture will be dramatically different. Even making the blanket statement, Americans love small talk, can be a little bit too generic because even the type of small talk is going to vary dramatically across the country. In the South and parts known as the Bible Belt, it wouldn't be unusual to hear someone making small talk to a stranger and ask, what church do you go to? Because the assumption is you go to church based on the culture of that area, whereas you would never ask that in places like Los Angeles, for example. We will freely admit that our videos are often titled something along the lines of Germany versus USA differences. And that can lead to the idea that these are generic things that can be applied to these countries as a whole. But to be honest, that is just because nobody will click on a video titled Differences Between Oklahoma and Rhineland Falls. Instead, we always mention in our videos that we are specifically from these two parts of both countries, and therefore you might have different experiences because these two countries are so incredibly diverse. This is more and more exciting to discover how diverse these two countries are and the people in them. For us personally, it has also allowed us to even take a step outside of our bubble in the South, and more specifically Oklahoma, and realize how dramatically different different and unique our culture is to other Americans in many cases, and we have learned to appreciate it more. So are stereotypes always wrong? 
Not necessarily, but should you just blindly believe everything you hear about a country or people group? Of course not! We hope that in our videos, you see the differences between these two countries and appreciate the differences and maybe ask the questions more often, what are they really like? What makes us unique? And what can I learn from them? Let us know in the comments if you held these stereotypes or what other things you questioned and found out to be just a misconception. We are also happy to clear up any more questions that you may have of what American culture is actually like. So leave those in the comments as well. Also, to see who made it this far into the video, the unrelated question of the week, should french fries be eaten with ketchup or mayo? Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you in our next video. Cheers! Volunteer firefarting? <laughs> firefarting? <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> Don't do <laughs> this uh, is so funny. Am I a child? You're a child. Uh. She also left an owl's farm still. <laughs> so good does in fact also have a volunteer firefighting system. Did I say firefighting too? Well, I think you said firefighting, oh, but just in case. Okay. <laughs> it's on the brain.